day's time spent in Colonial Williamsburg, under most occasions, is used up exploring and learning about many of the well-known historic landmarks that make up the old city. But on the nearby outskirts of Williamsburg's famous avenue, sitting along a road running parallel to the Duke of Gloucester Street, lies an aged brick prison house that confines a cold, dark, long, and most riveting past. That's some outside the public jail here in Colonial Williamsburg. This was the unfortunate quarters for those who broke the law. If you found yourself here in the 18th century, you were either awaiting trial or anticipating punishment in accordance with your crimes. This was Virginia's chief prison, which housed debtors and criminals and served as the jail for the general court in the nearby capital. Here, Blackbeard's pirates, captured in 1718, were confined until the day of their hanging. Leg irons and exercise yard, food slots and criminal cells with primitive sanitation have been restored to their early appearance. A thick entry door, which led to the public jail's prison yard, was left wide open for close-up inspection before freely entering within the walls of the jailhouse to embark on a self-guided tour. My quest for the day would be, first, explore the exterior of the prison, including the perimeter of the jailer's quarters. Then, pass through the jail's first open door on site and wander in the exercise yard. Next, I would go inside each of the four exterior prison cells on the grounds of the public jail, where a vast number of notorious inmates once did time. And finally, finish out my visit by entering inside the prison to view the jailer's quarters and to get a close-up look inside one of the debtor's prison cells located within the building. This uh, small door compartment over here has got me a little curious. See like some type of circular door handle there, but I'm not sure what exactly is behind that. And it looks also like they have a some type of entrance on the ground level here. I'm not sure if that's a small staircase leading to a cellar area or what that is. It's not your typical slanted entrance to the uh, basement or cellar of an old colonial house, but a lot of curiosity on this little pocket of the building. After 1722, the jailer's quarters were added to the prison. They were lived in by a long list of recorded keepers and their families over time. The restoration standing here today appears as it once did after the jailer's quarters were added to the eastern part of the building. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and go inside. Entering through the brick wall's open door brought me to the prison's exercise yard an area where debtors and minor offenders probably wandered for short periods of time outside their isolation. You can see the uh, barred windows there. But here is another one of these floor style entry points and I'm not exactly sure what that is. It almost looks like this. Later, I would realize these rings were probably used to fasten a prisoner's leg irons to. Don't want to pull too hard there. The restoration of the jail to its early 18th century appearance, after all these years, was revealing its extremely weathered brickwork, similar to how it might have looked long ago. Something about aged brick, just really, uh, it holds up over time, but it definitely begins to reveal its age, as you can see here. This actually looks a lot older than some of the surrounding brick. Let's go check out the, the jail cells. Entering through the next open door led me to four cells that housed the worst of criminal occupants, detained and sometimes shackled under wretched and detestable conditions. Before the revolution, the jail imprisoned free persons of serious crimes awaiting trial, 
suspected runaway slaves, the mentally ill, and debtors. During the revolution, loyalists, spies, deserters, and prisoners of war were amongst others charged with criminal wrongdoings and jailed here. Well, let's enter into one of the cells. Very dark place. This, this actually looks like a casket, a wooden casket that is serving as a bench as well, but not sure if that was a, a message to the prisoner that they would get to sit on the actual casket they would be placed in upon their execution. Pretty grimacing thought there. This would be their shackles. It's very dark in here, so it's hard to see, but these were probably the shackles that would be around the legs or the arms of the prisoners. I would imagine that would be the wrist. You could probably fit a wrist in there. This would have been actually where they used the bathroom. They would step up onto the toilet there to take care of your business. And it looks like on the doors here too, they had a lookout. I guess this would have been a slot where they could have uh, placed whatever food they gave them without opening the door. Another little vantage point the prisoners could look out of. A massive keyhole. The jailer's key was uh, definitely a huge key. Here we are inside another one. And there is the shackles. This one has a uh, lock on it. We weren't going anywhere without that jailer's key. And that would have been where the uh, shackle would have been attached to. Would not have been an ideal place to have been, especially if you were only in here for a minor crime, maybe um, whatever source of a financial pressure you were dealing with would have landed you inside here. It wouldn't have been a, an ideal place to have been amongst other prisoners that probably had much more uh, serious crimes on their shoulders. And I guess if you were in any of the cells, this one could have been the best one based on the view. Better vantage point than the other cells, it seems like. Having a little bit of view must have uh, made things a little bit better imprisoned inside the public jail at Colonial Williamsburg. Walk over here to the third jail cell, and this one, very dark. Through this cell's iron bars, the small exercise yard was visible, an area which I saw as the likely choice if plotting an exit strategy. Makes you wonder if there was ever an attempt at escape here. Blackbeard the pirate's quartermaster, William Howard, was once held inside one of these cells awaiting trial, as well as other pirate accomplices of Blackbeard who were detained here. Some that fought alongside him on the very day he died off the outer banks of North Carolina. 
they all lived out their final days here at the public jail in Williamsburg. Most of them found guilty, but eventually traveled down Nicholson Street, often referred to as Gallows Road, to face their demise. After a morning of downpour in Williamsburg, I sloshed across the small cell yard to enter inside the final exterior prison cell of the public jail. And then the fourth and final cell here looks like a smaller one. The barred windows in each cell may have prevented escape, but did little to fend off the brunt of winter and other inclement weather occurrences that took place while in detention here costing many their lives. Man, look at the size of the chain link here. Definitely not going to be breaking out of that easily, no doubt. If you found yourself here, incarcerated, you were pretty much not going anywhere. Not easy to see in the dark here, but it looks like there's actually a slot here. I'm not sure if this would have been an area where they would have slid food, maybe from uh, the other side of the building here. Maybe part of that is inside the house. I'm not exactly sure, but that's there for a reason. What appeared to be a food transfer slot looked as if it would have originated from inside the prison house. I decided to see if I could get a closer look from the other side. Let's go take a look at the jailer's quarters to see if we could potentially see what's inside. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get inside, but... Okay, it is open. Oh, wow. I'm going to actually pull my phone out and put a little light on this so you can see a little better. Okay. So it looks like we're in some sort of living area. There's a fireplace. There's a broom. It almost looks like a witch's broom. We've got some artwork on the walls here. One of the final keepers of the public jail to stay here was a man named Peter Pelham a family man with 14 children to his wife, Anne. It is thought that around five of their children lived here with him during his tenure here that began in 1771 until 1779. Try to put a little light on in there. But he had a bed and it looks like another fireplace. The General Assembly had once ordered Pelham to take prisoners to church on Sundays. A long row of criminals, bound by leg irons, were slowly led to Bruton Parish Church. Pelham was also the organist. Entering back through the foyer of the jailer's quarters, and it looks like this would have actually been, by the looks of this door, this is probably another, another part of the jail cell. And this could very well be the slots we saw inside. This could be where the jailer would have slid in food. The debtor cell was used for the confinement of those unable to pay back their debts and for other minor offenders. As many as 18 men could have shared this cell in close quarters together. Conditions here were so terrible at times that often typhus, also known as jail fever, would sicken those incarcerated here. Those locked up for debt were slightly more fortunate than other criminals held at the public jail, however. If they could arrange the proceeds, food from local taverns, candles, and even furniture could be brought to them during their confinement. The debtor's cell also had a fireplace which helped to ward off the cold if they could afford the price of a fuel source. This is definitely a better cell than the others. 
course, here's another one of the thrones. This one you can actually see a lot better with the uh, lantern here providing light. On the second floor of the prison was the jailer's bedchamber and other cells with similar accommodations for those charged with minor crimes at debt. And then up there is more jail cells on the second floor. It's roped off so we can't go up there. inside the jailer's quarters. Walking out of the public jail in Colonial Williamsburg, I freely exited the place that many imprisoned here would have only experienced on their slow march to and from sentencing or on a final departure to be executed. My self-directed tour revealing only a slither of the dark reality those kept here for serious and lesser crimes would have went through. Another enlightening exploration with one of the city's 88 original buildings restored to its 18th century presence. And though the history here is an extremely gloomy one, steeped in misery and bleakness. From within the prison walls, caged windows, and the thick locked doors of each cell, every criminal that did time here left behind a small trace and reminder of their captivity, waiting to be explored by those of us who curiously walk inside the somber rooms where they were once bound. <laughs> 